world hangs on a thin thread. And that is the psyche of man. Nowadays, we are not threatened by elementary catastrophes. There is no such thing as an age bomb. That is all man's doing. Yeah. We are the great danger. Psyche is the great danger. What if something goes wrong with the psyche? See? And uh, so you see, it, is, it is demonstrated to us in our days what, what the power of psyche is of man. How important it is to know something about it, but we know nothing about it. No, nobody would, would give credit to the idea that uh, the psychical uh, processes of the ordinary man have any importance whatever. One thinks, oh, we have just what we have in the All from his surroundings, he's taught such a thing, such a thing. And particularly if he's well housed and well fed, then he has no idea. So that's the great mistake. Because he is just that as which he is born, and he is not born as a double or as a reality. Yeah. Jung had a vision of at the end of his life, of a catastrophe, with a world catastrophe. I don't want to speak much about it. One of his daughters took notes, and after his death gave it. And there is a drawing with a line going down, up and down, and underneath is the last 50 years of humanity. And, and some remarks about the final catastrophe being ahead. But I have only those notes. What is your own feeling about it? The, the world. Well, situation. one's whole, one's whole feeling revolts against this idea. But since I have those notes in the drawer, I, I don't allow myself to be too optimistic. I think. Well, we have always had wars and enormous catastrophes and. I have no more personal fear much about that. I mean, at my age, if you have any house to go, so or so or so, because then people spoke. But, but the beauty of all the life is to think that the billions and billions and billions of years of evolution to build up the plants and the animals, the whole beauty of nature, and that man would go out of sheer shadow foolishness and foolishness and destroy it all. I mean, that our life might go from the planet. And we don't know. On Mars and Venus, there's no life. We don't know if there's any life experiment elsewhere in the galaxy. If we go and destroy it, it's... I think it's so abominable. I, I, I try to pray that it may not happen, that a miracle happens. Do you find that uh, young people that you see now are aware of that, that, that it's in their consciousness? Yes, it's it partly in consciousness, partly in their consciousness, and I think in a very dangerous way, namely in a way of giving up and running away into a fantasy world. You know, you, when you study science fiction, you see there's always the fantasy of escaping to some other planet and begin a new again, which means give up the battle on this earth. Look, consider it hopeless and give up. I think one shouldn't give up. Because if you think of answer to Job, if man would wrestle with God, if man would tell God that he shouldn't do it, would reflect more. That's why reflection comes in. You never thought that we might do better than just possibly sneak around the corner with not too big a catastrophe. When I saw him last, he had also a vision while I was with him, but there he said, I see enormous stretches, devastated, enormous stretches of the earth. But 
thank God it's not the whole plan. I think that if not more people try to reflect and take back their projections and take the opposites within themselves, there will be a total destruction.